The same industries that fought ethanol 100 years ago are fighting it today. When oil prices increased in 2007 and 2008, it prompted a wave of interest in biofuels and put the oil industry on edge. According to internal emails obtained by Senator Chuck Grassley, a conglomerate of organizations hired the DC-based PR lobbying firm Glover Park Group to come up with a way to discredit the biofuel industry. This anti-ethanol campaign is not just a coincidence. $300,000 six-month retainer of a Beltway public relations firm is behind the smear campaign against ethanol. Their strategy was simple. The cost of food had soared due to the oil price spike, but they would pin the increased food price not on oil, but on biofuels. Their plan worked perfectly. Turning corn into fuel was widely considered a smart way to reduce U.S. dependence on foreign oil, but now the idea is being challenged because of the worldwide food crisis. We are burning our food supply. The anti-ethanol fuel campaign tried to hide this essential fact. The byproduct of the ethanol process is food. Lots of food. From 2006 to 2012, we had record surpluses every year. And we had one and a half billion bushels of surplus corn almost every year of that period. It was mountains of it all over the Midwest. The corn that everybody is so worried about, about that we're taking out of people's mouths, well, that corn doesn't go to humans anyway. That corn is being grown mostly as animal feed. And one of the best animal feeds is not corn on the cob, but it's distiller's grains, which is made from corn. Now, the funny thing is that in order to make distiller's grains, you have to go through the fermentation distillation process, which creates ethanol. When the press says 25% of our grain goes into an alcohol plant, the assumption is it's been destroyed. But what they don't mention is in goes the corn and out comes ethanol and animal feed. In order to feed cattle, well, you have to make ethanol. Well, as long as you can make ethanol, you might as well use it for the vehicle. It's not food versus fuel. It's more food and fuel. If you keep capital in your community, that capital gets used. And suddenly, you're not just energy self-sufficient, you're financially self-sufficient. We're talking about communities saying, we're going to make our own fuel. We're going to all chip in money and have our own little distillation plant. If we can simply just change the way we make that fuel, the way we buy that fuel, from whom we buy that fuel, there's no longer an economic problem.